Hi guys, I'm here on the canal, I was messing about a bit and I was thinking uh, about a friend of mine that just bought a very nice bow, a compound bow, really interesting and I was, I was thinking about a bow in a survival situation. I've seen a lot of films about people making uh, bows and it involves a lot of work. Uh, the physics of a bow, of course, is that it acts as a spring. It stores the potential energy, potential kinetic energy. And to get a good spring action, you need of the, uh, it has to be tapered on both extremities. It has to be strong in the middle. And it has to get tapered out to the end so that you get a, a really nice spring action. And it takes a lot of work. Uh, splitting a piece of timber and endlessly carving until the, the distribution of that is, is correct. It just doesn't seem to me like, like something you would do in a, in a, in a survival situation when you, yeah, when you require your, your, your bow pretty, pretty much now. So I was thinking how to solve that and uh, I came up with a, a very simple solution. Because if you look at this, this is a piece of, of birch sapling. I wouldn't say this is a, a great uh, example of the kind of wood you would use. But uh, all kinds of these saplings, they are naturally tapered. Here they are thicker and here they get thinner. So if you get two of those pieces and you lash them together, then you have a, have a very easy way of getting a, a, a tapered bow. So that's what I'm going to try to do. That should not take more than just a few minutes to, to, to make, uh, provided you have, a, you have a, a bit of cordage. So I will take my coffee and then I will start making one. So I've started. I've done already this end and that end. That is really simple. I mean, this takes just a few minutes. The way I lash this is a very, yeah, simple way. It's it's the same way when I build sleds or repair sleds. You take a little knot there, and I would say well, here somewhere. You go around a few a few times. I think four is enough, five is even better. One more. And then what you do is you make another knot, flat knot here, and put the end through it, and then tighten that knot. And then this becomes self-tightening. And it won't slip, but you have to, to secure it with a little flat knot on top of it. When you're making sleds and so on, you will then burn that off. But I'm now just making the knot that stops it going back and removing the excess. It has actually named that, but I will caption that later on. So you see, this is basically the bow. I only have to put the string on now, but it had now, it acts as one thing and it will bend as one thing. And by this very simple method I now have tapering to both ends and if these th sticks have somewhat the same wood and somewhat the same uh, thickness, it will act pretty, pretty well distributed. But we have to see. I can't promise that yet. But this only took me, well, inclusive cutting this. Use the machete to cut this and, uh, yeah, 10 minutes maybe. So now I have to make a string. Wow. 
So here again I was thinking about how can I do this in the easiest way possible. I mean this is a pretty stiff bow. It will be very hard to string it. So what I did was this. I have one little loop which I will attach on one end of the bow using something called a constrictor knot. This will be great here. So, and I want this probably here somewhere. I think the bow will start bowing that way. Got a little loop here. On the other end, I will attach my string. And I will do that as well with a constrictor knot. I mean, it's a very easy one. It's a variation of the clove hitch, but it's uh, this is okay. And as the word says, it, it tightened on itself, so that's uh, that's a pretty good quality. Now, <clears throat> right, I could put the camera a bit farther off so you can see what I'm doing. I had this little loop there on the end dangling. And my string I will thread through that and back. Until it's pretty like this. Yeah. Then I will take Somewhere up here, take a little loop, just a very tiny loop here that I made in the string. Now you've probably already guessed, but this is going to be a trucker's hitch. And I go back again, so I make a, a pulley. So you see, and a pulley that will lock on itself. So now I can pretty safe and without too much force string this bow. You will see, this is the the pulley system. And when I start pushing it, uh, pulling it, it will. Uh, will tighten and lock on itself. This is pretty okay. Now I will lock my rope. It's now locked and I have some access here which I don't really want to lose because because uh, when I want to tighten it again so I just wind it up on the top of this so that it's out of the way here. So, see this is, this is the bow, and you see it's, it's pretty okay. It bends it quite symmetrically.
can see the end, I just wound the excess bit. Here is now the pulley. I almost completely closed it. And uh, this is the other end with the construction knot. So it takes some distance, but this is not a little bow, of course, this is a big one. And uh, you see, it actually takes the full length and it bends back. So that's okay. Very simple engineering and done in just a couple of minutes. This will get you hunting in a survival situation with no hassle, no hours of work. And uh, hey, if you break this one, you just make a new one. It's a bit more annoying if you break your, your bow that you've been carving on for days. The proof, of course, is in the shooting, but uh, I don't have an arrow. I have to fix that. <laughs> Uh, it is somewhat straight, not a lot. I hardened the tip a bit and I made flight on it, which is just a piece of birch bar. So now we'll start, tr make the first try. I don't know if you can see me, but uh, yeah. wasn't all bad. <laughs> I hit a tree. Maybe I should, there, there's le less trees. Huh. Well, you see it works. As you hear, the dogs uh, want their food, so I'm out of time. I'm pretty happy with this bow. It took me about 10, 15 minutes to make, and uh, just by a clever method of taking two branches, I solved the bit of having to taper uh, a bit of wood. And this, I think, is uh, it's very feasible in a survival situation. You can make this fast, hunt with it if you want, and then you just throw it away or you keep it. I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't keep it, but uh, provided, of course, you have cordage. I have nothing here to measure the, 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 the force of my string, and I, I need to do that. I need to find some way of, of measuring that. And also, of course, I need a, a real arrow, not this piece of birch that is uh, very, very crooked and bent. I, I did manage to straighten it out on the fire, but uh, somehow it is too too flexible. And uh, the, the flight isn't nice either. I mean, I, I used a bit of uh, uh, birch bark, but uh, this can be done much nicer. It did work. Without it, it didn't work at all. I mean, it is needed, but uh, so I hope you like this and uh, watch out for the enhancement of this bow and uh, this will uh, go into my playlist of uh, bushcraft engineering and uh, I hope you liked it. So see you in the next film guys. <laughs>